All right. Welcome, everyone, to the Option live stream special Europe edition at 1 p.m. Central here in Chicago. Um, I'm not sure exactly what time it is over there in Liege, Farida. Um, 8 p.m. All right. Prime time. We're ready to yeah. go. Um, sorry for the delay, everyone. We had a couple things to sort out with the uh, software, but we're here now. Um, and just really quick, wanted to introduce Farida Amadou, who's Skyping Hi, in live everyone. from... Liège um, in Belgium. So uh, we've got a really awesome performance for you tonight. We're going to play some videos of Farida's and then Farida and I will uh, chat a little bit in between the videos. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in everyone and, and uh, enjoy the program. And without any further <laughs> ado, let's uh, hear some of Farida's playing right from the jump here. Welcome back, everyone. Um, thank you, Farida, for sharing all these clips uh, today and, and giving us a chance to hear your thank wonderful you. playing. Um, I haven't seen you play since you know I, I was in Belgium last year, so it was an honor yeah. and you know a, a joy to hear you again. Um, <laughs> see you with the, the lovely uh, the video. Um, so I guess I wanted to talk a little bit uh, right from the outset about um, kind of your path to improvised music. I know you have a background that also includes a lot of punk and DIY um, yeah. work. Um, so I guess, first off, just how did you discover improvised music and, and make it such a big part of your practice mm -hmm. as, a, as a musician? 
Yeah, at first uh, I was playing in a hip hop band uh, with seven musicians and uh, three MCs. <laughs> uh, it was a group based in Liège. And uh, then I met uh, the drummer, Tom Malmordier, who was playing a lot of improvised music. And uh, I went to a concert of improvised music in Liège. And uh, I was like, wow, we can play like that? <laughs> I was like, really like, wow. And then also uh, very curious about it, actually. Then he said, yeah, uh, maybe uh, we should try something. And we were doing a, a lot of duo sessions, but really like hip hop and really rhythmical things. And then at the time we, we started to improvise like really naturally. I started to play with just my pedals at first. And uh, it was, uh, yes, for me, it was the beginning of uh, the improvised music. And then I discovered a lot of, uh, of great albums of Peter Brotsman and uh, also um, uh, a lot. I was listening. It's funny because I was listening a lot of improvised and a lot of hip hop music at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for me, just like just playing, I felt like the same, like I just wanted to to share something with the public and uh, my friend musicians and I was just feeling great about just playing. Also I was a beginner so I was like really uh, I wanted to play everything with everyone and I think I, I learned a lot uh, by playing like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So how, how long ago was it that you sort of had that initial kind of like wow I can do this moment with improvised music. Like in real time, is that like five years ago more? Was or is that more recent? And it's been kind of like pretty uh, rapid. Evolution yeah, for you. actually, it was five years ago. Like wow. uh, exactly five years ago. <laughs> and then uh, with that drummer Tom Malmordier, we started a duo of improvised music, and we started to to tour a bit in Europe, in Berlin, in Paris in Amsterdam and just meeting a lot of improvisers and uh, yeah for me it, it was like yeah the the best part because I was really really like uh, discovering uh, a lot of things still now but it was really the beginning of wow <laughs> yeah I think it's, it's really fascinating sort of just how rapidly you know from getting to the moment of kind of like discovering all these new things that you can do and then in really a pretty short period of time, you're super active playing mm -hmm. in festivals and playing with a lot of really established, amazing, you know, people in Europe. So uh, I think yeah. it's just a fascinating kind of path to, to where you are right now. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I think also it's really interesting with your, your work and other kind of realms of music. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel like there's like a, a connection in the approach between the way that you play improvised music and maybe when you're playing in a punk band or a hip hop band, do you think there's like a similar, um, you know, yeah. whether it be like from an emotional perspective or from like a technical perspective, what's the connection that you see there or are they like completely different uh, yeah. parts of your brain? Yeah, for me, there is a connection for sure, but uh, as I see it and feel it, it's more emotional, you know, like, what I feel when I'm playing, it's like the same energy when I play all kind of styles, if we <laughs> call it like that. And uh, it's just like, yeah, the energy of the other musicians and uh, the audience and uh, the kind of uh, the uh, trends I'm into, you know, like I'm when I'm playing, I'm always like in a kind of trance. Uh, I cannot really explain it, but uh, I'm into something and then when it's finished, I'm out of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the but I'm still um, I'm still uh, aware of what's happening, of course, but it's like really I'm in kind of, uh, yeah, 
uh, a bubble. <laughs> sure, yeah, I, I feel the same way when I'm playing. Um, I think it's really interesting too, because with all of those different kind of stylistic areas that we talked about, like mm -hmm. you also kind of, I think you commonly think of those styles of music or approaches to music as being really confrontational or really kind of like all yeah. about the sort of like moment in the connection with the other human beings that you're with, right? And mm -hmm. so I think there's like a really interesting balance there of like, on one hand, you're kind of in yourself and in, you know, yeah, inside of what you're doing at any given moment, but there still kind of is this inherent like, in your yeah. face, confrontational aspect to, you know, yes. whether it's, uh, you know, free music or it's punk or it's, it's mm -hmm. so I think that's yeah. a really interesting kind of they yeah. feel like two, like they would be two opposite mentalities mm -hmm. to put yourself in, but they kind of do have this um, yeah. kind of the same at the same time. I don't know. Yeah, sure. And also, uh, people often say to me, "Oh, you you played hip hop, uh, punk. Uh, you playing uh, jazz, and and how like how can you do it?" And I'm like, for me, it's it's like I just want to play everything with everyone and learn from everyone. <laughs> so if I can do it, uh, I do it, you know. It's just, yeah, it's just that, actually. Because the the year I was playing uh, punk with Cocaine Peace, I was also for a few months in a, in a jazz orchestra in Paris. And some people were like, ah, oh, you're like very classical <laughs> and then playing punk uh, like in a very energetic way. And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, sure. I want to do it. <laughs> and I, so many of these like divisions that we think of in terms of mm -hmm. you know, different styles of, of music or art or whatever it is, it, they're really kind of made up anyway. Like, yeah, you, know, there's, you can look through any like musical history and find a million folks who were like playing one gig, you know, mm -hmm. one night, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the, I, I always think there's a, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Buell Needlinger, who's like a really, uh, uh, no. but not very well known bassist in America. Mm -hmm. but, uh, there was a point in time where he's like playing on Cecil Taylor records, but then also mm -hmm. playing in the Boston Symphony Orchestra like every night. Yeah. So it's like a weird. <laughs> crazy like uh kind of zeitgeist aspect of just you know you take the opportunities that come your way but there, at the same time there is I think a common thread through all of those mm -hmm. things that you are working on and different music that you're involved in and that there's there's always kind of an aspect of just you know trying to free oneself from you know whatever yeah uh, sure so um <laughs> really fascinating to to hear from you about this stuff um but maybe we could check in on the the next little uh video piece that we've got here um, yes. and listen a little bit to some music and uh, we'll come back in in a few minutes all right yeah. <laughs>
All right, we're back with Farida Amadou, um, Skyping in live from Liège. Um, and I just wanted to ask you a little bit about um, the, the bass, your instrument, um, and mm -hmm. how you have so many different approaches to the instrument and how you know you can get so many different sounds and, and, and timbres out of the instrument. I know from my own experience as a guitarist who plays a lot of electric guitar, I find myself fighting with the instrument a lot of times because it can be so limiting in terms of like the sounds that you can get out of it because a lot of fretted electric instruments are so dramatically geared towards playing notes and playing notes really, really fast and loud and kind of, uh, I think it can be really difficult sometimes to break out of those kind of mm -hmm. uh, tra more traditionally uh, uh, oriented sounds on an instrument like the electric bass. So what, like, how do you approach that? And is that a problem that you you find yourself up against or, or, or not? Uh, yeah, for, for me, it's, it's not uh, really a problem. As I see it, actually, um, when I started to listen to a lot of improvised music, I was fascinated by uh, saxophonists and drummers, actually, and not really bass players, or I think in even in, in the jazz music, I was really fascinated by the, the saxophonists and drummers. And when still now, when I go to concerts, I'm like really looking at them, what they are doing with their hands, and not really trying to 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 do the same on my instrument, but really like uh, be into their sounds. So for me, I I see the bass just as an instrument and not as as the bass, if you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, also because I started to improvise with a guitar um, a few months ago, and uh, I just noticed I was playing the guitar like I'm playing the bass, you know. <laughs> so for me, it's more, yeah, it's more about, uh, yeah, taking an instrument and trying to to play it as as yourself again with your energy and the energy you feel around you and what you want to give to people and and all that to trends so yeah <laughs> Absolutely. yeah I, I think that's always such a, a good way to approach it is to, to kind of free yourself from whatever trappings of like a particular instrument is just you know, mm. don't don't try to sound like that instrument listen to you know there are so many wonderful you know artists and musicians out there that you can take a little bit from whether it's a saxophone yeah, or, a, or a percussionist yeah. or whatever and i can totally hear that in your playing too mm -hmm. you know especially with that second piece with a lot of yeah. um, super percussive stuff on the on the mm -hmm. like right over the pickup and getting that kind of bright um yeah you know, attack in, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. um and there's a, a question actually from the chat that i want to get to real quick from Al Ayatori, um, and it, it's asking about your uh, choices uh, when it comes to effects and what your, mm -hmm. if you have a favorite effect that you like to use. Um, I think, you know, between the first piece that we heard and the second one, there was obviously yeah. a radical difference in, you know, <laughs> what you were working with there. Yeah. Um, in that first piece, there was a lot of feedback and a lot of um, overdrive mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of effects work. And in the second piece, a lot of like, you know, uh, playing the strings and the instrument a little bit more directly, but I guess mm -hmm. if you could speak to your use of effects um, and how that kind of uh, filters into your playing. Yeah, actually, I really like uh, to use the um, like the overdrive. Actually, when I play, I, I always set up my pedals, but I'm not really always use them, and I don't really have. Uh, a preference of effects uh, but yes I really like the overdrive but I have two I have a fuzz and uh, an overdrive and I have an overdrive I just use for the the high uh, levels so I can really like uh, have that kind of uh, when I'm playing uh, like the, the, the picky thing uh, like 
I don't know, like when I, I play guitar, like really like straight and really um, dry. Uh, otherwise, I yeah, no, I, I don't really have a preference in effects. Yeah. But since, yeah, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because uh, sometimes when I play, I, I don't use it. So it's really, it's not, I don't choose what I'm, what I'm going to do before, for sure. Yeah, and, I, I think that's a, a really important power that everyone needs to be able to harness is to have a lot of stuff in front of you and not always use it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you do that extraordinarily well in, in, in <laughs> making the choices that you do. So um, I have to commend you for that. It, 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 <laughs> it was really wonderful, you know, again, hearing such a stark difference between the first piece that we heard and, mm -hmm. and the second piece um, I'm always super fascinated with feedback because it's like it, it, it's something that is so hard to predict or control exactly okay. what you're going to get whenever you turn the volume up and kind of uh, use that. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, so I guess, sure. Do you find that that's something that you really like using mm -hmm. um, frequently and, and what you're sort of... Uh, how that works for you, how, you know, what are some of the difficulties in yeah. harnessing that feedback? Um, I know the, the room always has a massive effect, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're in a, a tiny, super dry room versus like a big high ceiling room, the feedback yeah. you're going to get is completely different. So I guess, could you speak a little bit about um, your, your use of feedback in that first piece that we heard? Yeah, sure. I think it's uh, more uh, an influence from uh, my period in the punk band, actually, mm -hmm. uh, because before that I was not using at all overdrive or first pedals. I, I, it was my first time with the punk, ba punk, punk band. Sorry. So I think until from that period until now, it's been uh, almost two years. And I've been really working on the, the feedbacks as not really to just make noise, but uh, like really to to try to make also melodies with the feedback, which it was not easy for me. It's still not actually, but I'm really trying to to use it in uh, also in uh, in a sweet way. I don't know if, uh, sorry for my English, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> a perfect word for it. Yeah. <laughs> so I did like a lot of uh, of really uh, uh, big um, uh, uh, feedbacks, uh, like really noisy when I was playing punk, and then when I decided to start to play solo, I was just like, okay, let's try to use it in another way. Absolutely. Yeah. And also about the, the percussive uh, uh, things, I, I guess it's also because uh, when I, I was a child, I was listening to a lot of uh, African music, West African music. Uh, my mom was listening to a lot of cassettes from uh, Umu Sangare, Ali Farka Touré, and I just heard that a lot, a lot, a lot. And... Uh, I think without thinking of it, I have that kind of percussing uh, way to play on my instrument. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it totally comes through, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I just noticed like a few months ago because I was like, huh, okay, this thing I know. <laughs> Absolutely. That's amazing. Um, so maybe it's a good time to pivot back to uh, another video um, mm -hmm. of you performing, and then we'll come back in a few minutes and, and chat a little bit yeah. more. Sound good? <laughs> All righty. Farida Amadou. Thank you. 
All right, welcome back. Hey. We're here with Farida Amadou um, in live from Liège, Belgium. Um, I, I wanted to remind folks who are tuning in right now that if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Farida, you can feel free to throw them in the chat. and We'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, there's one there uh, from Ken Vandermark, who, who mm -hmm. uh, co-curates the series, um, asking about the visuals um, from these performances that you've sent us. Um, yes. How did the visuals come together? Um, who shot these videos, and I, I think they're really, they look amazing. The work yeah, they are. Really tremendous, so um, if you could talk just a little bit about how the videos came together, um, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Actually, um, so uh, they were made uh, by a, a visual artist. Uh, his name is Jérôme Maillère, and uh, we've been working together since almost two years now. And he's doing all my videos uh, uh, on YouTube also. And uh, so when we met, we were talking a lot of uh, the differences between uh, the, the art, uh, contemporary art world and the music world uh, with, yeah, in terms of uh, like uh, performances and also how can you can you really work in the both worlds? And uh, we started to, to do uh, the videos, uh, yeah, uh, almost two years ago. And I wanted like to, to share my way of playing music with him in a way uh, he, he could also improvise with the camera. So the first one was was like really amazing. Uh, it was an amazing experience for me and I, I guess for him too because he was like really like with the camera, like really improvising and and yeah, trying to, to do a duo with the camera also. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it, it, it's something that would seem really difficult to do to be able to create something that can kind of uh, match the abstraction of the sounds that you're hearing with mm -hmm. something that is it's not just using illustration or something that already is kind of inherently abstract but using the actual image and being able to use the focus in such a way that it yeah, really yeah. Mirrors that um, <laughs> and isn't just you know a video of you playing the bass the whole time right it's yeah, like no. it, it is but it's a lot more than that so I, I yeah think was, it's not like a, a doc documentary of me playing like it's really a performance of the the person who, who's filming also so it, it's your own and then also we decided to to create a label from that like also to build bridges uh, between uh, visual artists and musicians to make that kind of things and to also uh, like do records, like uh, do uh, uh, events, like uh, trying to create like really uh, bridges between uh, artists and, uh, and just say, yes, <laughs> we can work all together and doing uh, that kind of stuff. So, Absolutely. yeah, the label is really new. It's called Disney Max. We have a website. And uh, also, I just wanted to say, Andrew, I'm based in Brussels now. Oh, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Congrats. But, uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, since a few months, I, I'm based in Brussels with Jerome, and uh, we are trying to work on our new lab label uh, with uh, the video we are presenting to tonight or so. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah. So, I, is 
speaking of the label, I know you have an upcoming solo record mm -hmm. um, that you've been working on. Is that on the same label or is that uh, a different label? So uh, my Masura record will be out on two different labels, actually. So this Neuf Mars, the one with Jerome, and also a label uh, from Berlin called Autogenesis, and it will be a cassette. So a cassette on Autogenesis and a CD on this Neuf Mars records. Amazing. Yeah. So we have a, a couple also uh, preview videos of the, the solo record that is coming out. Is it in November next month? Yes, next okay. month. <laughs> so we're, we're going to put some plugs in for the solo tape. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe we can we can pivot to the, the first uh, teaser for the record and then we can maybe talk a little bit about just solo playing since I know yeah, this, sure. is, is this your first solo record that you've made? Yes, my okay. first. Yeah, it was recorded one year ago. Okay, fantastic. So maybe yeah. let's let's hear that first little preview of the record and then we'll yeah. we'll rap about it in a moment. All right, welcome back. Um, so, uh, solo playing is kind of like a uniquely terrifying uh, experience. Well, maybe I'm just bad at it, but um, <laughs> but I always have, I, I have enjoyed in these talks that we've done on the Option Series, talking with a lot of different folks about what their approach to solo playing is like, and the anxieties of it, and also sort of the process of how you are able to organize, uh, you know, a composition, even if you're the only, you know, especially because you're the only person responsible for carrying mm -hmm. it forward and so on. Um, so could you just talk a little bit about uh, your approach to solo playing and, and what that experience is like for you? Yeah, uh, actually, it's not that easy, you know, <laughs> because at first I was just like, like, I think like everyone playing alone and not really thinking about like playing solo and and release an album or something i was just like trying to use um, all the things i learned from my other bands 
and all my vocabulary to to do something uh, I would be like uh, uh, happy to do for me, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and um, so now the way I see it, it's like just I I just play and. Uh, after after a few concerts, I play for myself, but not really organize the sounds or the, the objects I'm going to use or the pedals. Like just playing for myself right away and uh, trying to evolve with that. Actually, I don't really have plans for that. Um, and uh, yeah, sure, it's really terrifying to to play solo because. When you try something and it's it's not working as you want, uh, you try to play with the accident and then there is another accident and yeah, it's just like that. It's yeah. Someone told me once it's it's like life, yeah. <laughs> and, and I agree actually. <laughs> I think that's why we're we're drawn to it is because it's a uh, you know it's a uniquely you know. Uh, anxiety uh, driving experience do but it also when when you can make it work it's like one of the most satisfying uh, you know experiences imaginable um, yes. and also now you know where we're in with the pandemic and, and everything mm -hmm. that's going on you know I, I think solo work is kind of now the mode that it has to be for the foreseeable future I know um, Europe is probably a little bit further along in terms of being able to see other humans outside of, you know, yes. uh, you know however, although I know it sounds like Belgium has also had um, some some difficulties as well trying to come out of the pandemic. Yeah, sure. Um, but I guess I, I wanted to ask kind of how the sort of new uh, paradigm that we're in and the new uh, kind of conditions that we're experiencing is affecting the work that you're doing. Do you find like, find that you're still able to kind of explore and, and try uh, collaborations with other people or have you been more kind of uh, focused inward on working on solo projects and, and things on your own? Yeah, actually, uh, like during the the first period from March to June, I was like really, actually, I was not playing even for myself. And then... Uh, but uh, I had a few uh, a few emails from friends asking me to play something, and uh, then they will play on top of my music, like to collaborate uh, at uh, distance. <laughs> and actually, it was really interesting um, because uh, yeah, it was another way to to improvise to improvise. Sorry. And uh, in a way, you have time to 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 play and to to think of what you're gonna play, but to still improvise on it. So in that way, it was really interesting. And uh, after June, I I started to play again for myself. And uh, yeah, really uh, trying to to focus on on my solo. And I discovered now we were talking about playing and the way I evolve. Now I I'm more like in a, in an ambient vibe, like playing a lot of drones and uh, a lot of variant into the drones. Uh, because the album was going to come out uh, next month is more like really fuzzy and really punk. So it's really also interesting uh, to discover uh, how you evolve in the music when you cannot really see see it when you are in, in your life, how you evolve as a human. But you Absolutely. can see it in the in the music. Yeah. Right. And, and our experiences, I mean, first of all, the way that we experience time, I feel like over the past six months, I don't know mm -hmm. if you feel this way, but just the way that time passes is like a completely different, yeah. it's been completely mind blowing to feel mm -hmm. like time is 
simultaneously racing forward and also like nothing is happening, you know? So, yeah. and that, I think when you're playing, especially solo, but I think in all, uh, you know, contexts of playing music, mm -hmm. that time aspect is a really important component and a really present component of what you're doing at any given moment. So I think one way or another that was going to affect the way that we all approach this stuff. And I think it's, it's interesting to hear you uh, yeah. communicate that you're kind of going more in this, maybe more sp sparse might not be the best mm -hmm. word, but something that is a little bit slower and longer mm -hmm. in its formation and organization yeah. rather than something that has a lot of, you know, fast density. Um, yeah. So that's a really interesting thing. Yeah. Or so now I can really understand how we, it's important for me because during that time, like you said, the time was super weird, like the feeling of the time. But now I can see as as I play differently that, like, yes, we are still alive, actually. <laughs> we are there and we are struggling every day and everyone is. But uh, at least we we can try to, to do more uh, music and more art uh, for us and for people. Too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. We have one more question um, from the chat. Again, from AI Yotori. Um, future plans, new stuff on the horizon. What, what's coming up after this solo record? Anything um, uh -huh. exciting? Yes, I have a, a trio coming up with uh, Fred Lomberg Olm. And, <laughs> yeah, and a drummer called Simon, Simon Kamata, a drummer from uh, Essen in Germany. And uh, it's coming out on Catalytic Sound very soon. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and right. also a second solo uh, uh, was going to come out on the, the label of Café Otto, Takuroku, uh, on Wednesday, next Wednesday, actually. Wow. <laughs> always, yes. always stuff going on in the Marina Hamadou universe. That's fantastic. Yeah. Shout out to Fred, obviously a, a friend of the series and a friend yeah. of CSS and and uh, all the work we do. So, um, yeah, I, those are the questions that I've got for today. So, <laughs> thanks again, Farida, for for Thank tuning you. in and chatting with us um, and for you, sharing Andrew. the amazing videos that we've enjoyed so far today. Um, so, once again, thank you to Farida. Thank you to ESS for Thank for you. streaming these. And, uh, and, and everyone else out there for tuning in. And we're going to uh, end the program with the second uh, preview of the solo record coming out. In Perfect. A month. So, Thank, so, you. So, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It's really wonderful to hear yeah. you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.